Welcome to the Listen to Us Roundabout Movies podcast. Let's start the show. Here are your hosts, Wes Ford and Zach Harris. I'm Wes Ford. And I'm Zach Harris. We rant about movies and drink while we do it. On this episode, we'll be discussing what we've been watching, followed by a review of the new film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Black Widow. Now streaming on Disney Plus, Premiere Access, and playing in theaters. Tonight, we're drinking two separate things. Zach, what do you got? I've got uh, a Blood Orange Blonde, which is uh, mm. a Blood Orange Blonde, just as it sounds, from a Haymarket, which is a brewery in Chicago. That, nice. Um, used to just be like restaurant brewery. Now, huh. I, I, I used to go there. I had a friend that worked there, and I was at the store, and I was like, oh, they're fucking bottling this shit. They're canning it now. You the know, canon. Yeah, try it out. Uh, yeah. So, blood orange, blood. Awesome, blood orange blonde. Interesting combo. Um, I did not get a beer today. I got something that I saw and was like, uh, it's too perfect, right? Um, I got a Black Widow cider. Uh, Boy, and it's from Original Sin. They're up in New York. Um. And I've had their ciders before. Never had this one till now. Mm-hmm. And it's even got a little Black Widow spider on it. Oh, shit. It's got the symbol on Ooh. it. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. Meant to be. Um. So, uh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. How's yours? Good. Real, real yeah. easy drinking, really orange. It's like real okay. orangey. But I don't dislike it. It's just like... I like orange, so... Oh, I do but that, too. C- that could be it's, too much for people. It's a punch, for sure. It's like, it's real orangey, but not in a bad way. It's not like sweet, you know? Okay, good. Um, yeah, this is pretty good. I I like ciders, but uh, I don't like them when they're like super sweet. I don't yeah. like them when they're super sweet. Gotta be dry. This is... This is more on the dry side. This mm-hmm. is more on the dry side. Um, it's made with blackberries and and New York apples. And crushed um, spiders. <laughs> and crushed black widow spiders. There's a specific and... black widow spider in every can. <laughs> and poison. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The poison boils and, uh, out. <laughs> yeah, it boils out. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a novelty and uh well you there's nothing else i can follow but that that's it's that was too good <laughs> uh no but it's really good it's not it's not too sweet and um it's got like a little dry dryness berry flavor to it it's good would recommend nice. hell yeah would recommend yeah but uh before we discuss what we've been watching ronnie i think you've got something to say this podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audio book download and a 30 day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash LTURAM. Choose from 180,000 titles from your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Now back to you, Wes. If you like what you hear on this episode, remember you can find other episodes of our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and most major podcast platforms. All right, let's get into it. Zach, what have you been watching? Um, not a ton. Been doing a lot of traveling to see my family, so, uh, or I guess not a lot of traveling. I went on a couple trips, you know, see family. But, um... Yeah, so I haven't watched a lot. I did watch recently 
a movie called Amsterdam, which um, I saw that you logged that. Yeah, which honestly I thought was gonna be pretty shitty, and uh, but I was like, oh, you know, this will be this will be funny. Someone said it was like a, you know, like action movie, action horror type thing. And you know what? It was actually pretty good. Like for for uh, I think it's like mid eighties, late eighties genre movie. Yeah, nineteen eighty eight. Um, pretty fun movie. It's, like, about a serial killer who's, like, a scuba diver. So, he just, like, murders people in Amsterdam because it's all, like, canals downtown. So, he can just, like, pop out of the canal and murder someone and then, like, dive back in the water. (laughs) Which is, like, a a funny but also kind of scary idea. Um, but it just has great set pieces in it. Like, there's a boat chase through the canals on like two like speed boats where they're just like zipping down going super fast and it's just real wild it's like damn this is a great set piece um hell yeah a lot of the performances are like pretty goofy but overall it was pretty fun like i I thought it was a pretty enjoyable movie liked it way more than i thought i would like it based on it just being called amsterdam (laughs) no yeah not expecting a lot yeah um (laughs) But yeah, it was pretty. It was a it was a fun one. It's a fun watch. Um, and it also has the person I watched it with had the Blu-ray, my buddy Scott. And um, on the Blu-ray, there's a music video that the director made of a song called Amsterdam, and it's like an '80s pop song that has like totally, absolutely nothing to do with the movie, like a radio hit <laughs> pop song. And it's on a set of Amsterdam, and like all the characters are like reenacting the movie like on the set and it's honestly one of the best music videos i've i've seen in a long time it was unbelievably good i was like holy shit like it's corny as fuck but like <laughs> yeah no, but it's seen... done in that style right like... yeah because usually it's like they'll film the band and then they'll intercut the footage you know what i mean like from yeah. the movie and this had a little bit of that but it would like intercut footage and then cut to a shot of the main cop and then it would zoom yeah. out and he'd like move his gun and the camera would pan and it'd just be the band. And he was like, like weird lighting <laughs> changes of the actors, like doing like bits in front of the band and stuff. In front of Re- the band? <laughs> yeah, That's like, hilarious. Really funny. Um, Almost as good as the movie, the, the music video for the song. <laughs> so if you watch it, definitely watch the music video after. I wonder if that's on YouTube or something where I could just oh probably look, look up the music video. I'll find it for you. It's a good one yeah cool hell yeah man so you had fun with that one then yeah it was good it was uh it was a worthy watch i would recommend it it might be stream i think it's on shutter um okay that's cool and also i guess this director um had done the lift which is supposed to be good which is like a killer elevator movie that i've heard about okay um and done some other stuff that's supposed to be of note but yeah i had fun with it it was good excellent um i watched a a number of stuff um i did some traveling too went up to michigan for a wedding so i was i actually squeezed in two movies like one way there one way back nice, uh, just nice. like on on the on the tv thing um yeah. uh but first, before I talk about some of those, I'm gonna. I want to mention I watched um, No Sudden Move, which I think you also watched. Oh yes, I did yeah. watch No Sudden Move. Steven Soderbergh film. Um, I was a fan. I was a fan. It was great. Yeah, I, yeah, I really, liked I really it liked a lot. it. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, great cast. Yeah, killer and cast. Uh, it really had those. It really had the um, Ocean Eleven vibes for me, you know, mm. most mostly because of the score. Yeah, a lot of um, like the score mainly, sort of like the jazzy upbeat, like stuff. Was yeah, it's a just really entertaining watch. A movie I've sort of been waiting for for this year. You know, just I feel like we haven't. You know, it's just been slow on films for you know a while. It's been uh, the best year in memory. No, I'm just kidding. It's been a pretty rough <laughs> year for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Better than last year, I, I, I'd say. Hope. Mm-hmm. I think the movies that are coming out this year should be better than last year. Yeah. But um, yeah, No Sudden Move. It's on HBO Max. 
definitely recommend um, Don Cheadle, Benicio Del Toro, David Harbour, uh, Ray Liotta, John Hamm, Brendan, Brendan Fraser. Dude, yeah, that was, was interesting. Imagine, Brendan Fraser, good That cast. was interesting. Yeah, they, I'm way in. Bring it, cast him in the stuff. Bring him back, bring him back. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is actually really ironic that he was, I watched this movie because I just watched, went up in Michigan with family, something to throw on. We watched uh, The Mummy. Nice. Uh, rewatch Love it. The Mummy. And uh, yeah, great film. And <laughs> I mean, quite a difference between now and then. <clears throat> mm. But please come back, man. Like, yeah, it's kind of kind of crazy. Um, Good cast. And there was a uh, a cameo in No Sudden Move, which I won't mention, but kind of hilarious because he's just a cameo and everything. Oh yeah, totally. Classic Soder- <laughs> fucking classic Soderbergh move. Really funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very entertaining movie. Um, mm. Yeah. I don't know what else to say other than what do, were you watching. into the the like anamorphic the like weird uh, distortion or whatever. Oh yeah, that was interesting. I feel like that's a talking um, point. No, that is a good talking point. Um, no, I, yeah, I liked it. I don't. I didn't have anything against yeah. it. Didn't buy. I mean, it was just like sort of a noticeable it's real, detail. It's real bold. <laughs> like, it's, it's very bold. Um, especially some of the shots are of, like very warped. Yeah, you know, the, and it's the like edges. there's a lot of stuff where he's like tracking a car in the middle, and and the background's distorting, and it's like a little weird, but it's like whatever. But then there's also yeah. shots where he's just framing people like way frame left, and Don yeah. Cheadle is like squished, and it's like, yeah. whoa, this is bold for sure. Like very I bold. Move. I didn't dislike it. I thought it was interesting. I didn't either. Like I thought it looked cool, but it's just uh, I've heard a lot of talk on the lenses, you know. Mm-hmm. But and I wonder yeah. what because it's just like him. It's anamorphic lenses, right? But I wonder yeah, I if there's so. some. some thing with the sensor that makes it like more exaggerated or if it's just the way yeah. he's he's panning that's like making it like more noticeable like that but for uh, sure because he i mean they he specifically placed them in those areas of the lens and, and scenes like yeah. um you know filling the frame with these people on a shot but they are like on the very edge and there yeah. are people like on the left and right they were like they're sitting down in the living room or whatever and like Don yeah. Cheadle on the right was like curving around <laughs> yeah. Benicio Del Toro and it was like <laughs> yeah it's real uh, wild yeah but it wasn't like to the much re- I didn't think it was like obnoxious or anything it was just no. sort of like uh an interesting detail definitely bold but it wasn't I don't think it was like over the top mm-hmm. or anything like that no I didn't either yeah yeah um I enjoyed it yeah. also good like week and a half or two weeks for David Harbor. He's having a good time yeah. here. Yeah. His career is <laughs> doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah. So yeah, recommend. Definitely like a for the list that's out for this year, it's a must watch, I'd say, for twenty twenty one. Just like put like that on the list. Yeah. Classic classic four star, I feel like. Even though it classic was very four good, star it was just like yeah. boom, yeah. Soderbergh release it just another like solid movie nothing like yep. inc- incredible like holy shit have you seen that yet but not not saying that as a negative it's just like yeah classic Soderbergh just delivering the like the solid just a nice no movie. I like that he had like a more like um uh it kind of went back to form a bit mm-hmm. you know he went kind of been back to form and just got us like a really good um like a uh, high budget with a lot of like talent um yeah like thriller film um Mm -hmm. with this stamp on it yeah it's just it's a good one i think it also i liked the way it kind of like revealed what was like going on and the context that that had on everything and like also just like the the setting of it in detroit and it being about like the auto industry and then like you know, the Don mm-hmm. Cheadle's character and they're talking about like the neighborhoods in that one scene and everything's kind of like very subtly touched upon, but kind yeah. of um, builds to a way that fits together really interestingly by the end and like makes makes some interesting points without making that the focus of the movie. It's very much just like an entertaining crime thriller type thing, but yeah, kind of like but it's still wrapped fra- around. Yeah. Framed in in. A sort of moment in history, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think that I, I like the way that it handled that 
and uh yeah yeah i thought that was interesting for sure cool all right yeah. um what's your next one um well i'll talk about i did not watch or it's a show but i watched the first two seasons of servant have you watched that yet the m night Shyamalan show on apple or whatever no i haven't is that good oh, okay yeah, you know, um, it might be tough for you being a a, a new father because there's oh, a yeah. lot of there's a lot of baby shit in it. It's kind of all baby shit. Oh but, boy. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, I I went to visit my family and my mom had started watching it and really was liking it and we didn't have the Apple TV or whatever, so we were like, yeah, let's slam this. So every night we we're like, let's slam yeah. some more, you know? <laughs> like, um, yeah. But yeah, it was really fun. I think the thing that I initially responded to is it's a 30-minute horror drama show, which I was like, ooh, interesting. Don't see a lot of 30-minute, like, serious shows. It's usually always a 30-minute comedy. So that was kind of interesting. The cast is good. It's basically um, a creepy or a weird nanny who you don't know much about. Seems like she has a very different, like, backdrop. Is hired um by this couple in philadelphia to take care of their baby but their baby is a reborn doll so there's like some trauma that happened the mother is like tending to this reborn doll for like her therapy reborn doll yeah do you know what those are it's like a super I guess I, I, it's like no, a really I uh i guess i just know about it because i'm into the weird youtube holes of, <laughs> of scary <laughs> things this, yeah, I am too, but this like, isn't a hole I've I've found myself yeah. in. <laughs> they're like really super realistic baby dolls. So okay. it's it's just kind of like a brand of like it's it's the equivalent of like uh, those um real doll sex dolls that are like a real yeah. person, but like a they're baby like hyper realistic, not to have sex with. <laughs> yeah, but like <laughs> yeah, hyper realistic baby doll essentially. Um, and they're doing it as like a form of therapy. Yeah, so kid? that's kind of the mystery. You don't. There's some sort of trauma that happened with their baby. Now they have this reborn doll that the mother is treating like a real baby, and they hire Weird. this nanny who comes in to, to watch the fake baby. To watch the fake baby who takes it very seriously. So that's kind of the setup. Okay. okay. Um, it moves a lot of different places. But I'd say the first the first season was very good. I was like, this show is a banger. Like, there's I, multiple seasons. There's two. Yeah, the second one I think just came out earlier this year. The first one came out last, like around the same time last year or 2019 maybe. But um, Sha- Shyamalan's back, baby. Yeah, shot during the I think season two shot during the pandemic. Um, but the first season that wasn't it also just takes place almost entirely in their house. Like, the yeah. house is the set, and there's, like, four characters or five characters on the show. So I mean, it's so a pretty small-scale show, so I guess they were like, yeah, it makes sense to... for If we're looking for something to make during this time, this yeah. is, like, something you can do. Um, yeah, for sure. Second season opens it up quite a bit in a way that's interesting, but I think it also kind of becomes, like, a different show in a way. Um, so part of that I like, part of that was like, ooh, season one is still kind of better, you know? But definitely we'll continue watching it when the new ones come out. And, um, yeah, I I really liked it. I thought it was really good. Awesome. Yeah. That's a high praise. I'm definitely interested. Um, And now he's coming out with this new film, uh, Old. Mm -hmm. It's like next, this month, end of this month or next month? Uh, I think it's in like a couple weeks or something. Yeah, really soon. Mm-hmm. But cool, man. Yeah, there's actually some decent stuff on it on uh, Apple TV Plus. Yeah, um, I had never really poked around on there before, but after that, I yeah. was like, you know what? The show's pretty good. I gotta say. There's a new show coming out. Um, that seems like a like a dramedy series. It's mm-hmm. like kind of a more on the drama side, but it has comedic actors. Uh, Will Ferrell, pa- Paul Rudd. Uh. I feel like there's oh, another major star where that I'm he's thinking like of. The, uh, Paul Rudd's his therapist or something. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. Is that a, like that's a, a show? Dr- it's a show on Apple TV Plus. Okay. Yeah, and I, nice. I saw like a glimpse of the trailer and it looked interesting. 
So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I might have to dive into the, into that. Yeah. I, of other things. And then I realized after we were watching this that I do, I should have it cause I got an iMac. Like I got a new computer at the end of last year and they give it to you yeah. free for a year. So I was like, Oh yeah. shit. I, did, I think I have I it too. Have <laughs> yeah. I just never <laughs> I think downloaded I it, it. <laughs> because it was like, it's, I think at the time also, cause I, I think I got a new phone or something like right when it was first starting and I yeah. went on it and I was just like, yeah, there's like three shows on here and there's no like catalog yeah. titles. You know what I mean? Yeah, Which I yeah. I don't think they do still. I think it's all original content, isn't it? Is there like catalog stuff it on is. there? It is. I think it's their own original content, yeah. I believe. So I or, feel like that's you know, cool it's like in movies a way. and shows that are being released exclusively. Yeah. yeah. Through there. Like what was her name? Um uh the 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 movie Sophia last year that came out. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. With Bill Murray. Yeah, I heard about um, that. I never watched that was an, that, but... that was that was the only thing I've watched on there. Because mm-hmm. I had it for free and it was a new movie, yeah. um, but that was that was released just through Apple TV nice. um, Plus. Um, yeah. But yeah, everything's plus nowadays. <laughs> Everything has got to have your that, plus. That is the new trend of like streaming oh, yeah. service names. Pop a plus on your set, baby. Yeah, Paramount <laughs> Plus. That's the new one. Discovery Plus, Disney Plus, Apple Plus. Yeah. Netflix Plus, HBO Max plus <laughs> then there's <laughs> then there's then there's peacock <laughs> <laughs> plus <laughs> peacock plus <laughs> oh all right cool man yeah well that sounds good i uh i feel like i'd still be interested in, in watching that because i like yeah, for sure. stuff and um that sounds interesting i think you'd like it it just that uh, i just at one point, I was like, I think Wes would like this. And I was like, ooh, he has a new father. Yeah. Though. This might be tough. There's <laughs> definitely a lot of scary baby shit going on. You know what I mean? I can separate it a bit. Yeah, for know. sure. Some people can't, but yeah, mm. I can sort of, yeah. Yeah. Cool. For sure. And what was that called again? Uh, Servant. Servant. Yeah, okay. I have heard of that. But yeah, I didn't Yeah, I had heard about it. And I was like, oh, I heard that that was pretty good. And then I was like, okay yeah i just kind of never you know never really pursued it but watched the first one and i was like oof i'm in this is good hell yeah um uh so i watched two because speaking of babies i do have a baby so i've been watching a lot of uh disney plus nice um and so here and there i try and squeeze in like some new stuff you know that mm. she she could kind of have in the background or watch sort of and and i'd be interested in um yeah. one of them was uh raya and the last dragon check that out okay nice um looks really good on the tv 4k yeah very nice, nice animation um mm. would recommend very fun um had like the good pull on the heartstrings at the end sort of sort mm-hmm. of thing um and it's it's like a fantasy it's like a fantasy movie of um various asian cultures in a fictional world um trying to uh bring back the dragons and uh loved that nice. and it, animation was awesome so would recommend oh, yeah. um yeah and i'll just go ahead and tag on uh, luca a oh, okay. uh, the new Disney um, Pixar movie, mm-hmm. um, and it was it was it was okay. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out of your way to see it. I, I'd say it seemed it was, like a uh, minor. It seemed like they like downplayed the release a bit. Like it wasn't as big. I feel like there's yeah. like A list Pixar, and then there's B list, and they just kind of like poop out a bunch of stuff. But then they're like, these are the ones. Like when Soul came out, it felt like a big deal. But like this yeah, didn't I love feel Soul. like that big of a deal. Yeah, it was. Um, it's a good like you want to throw something on that's new that you're kind of casually watching mm-hmm. decent animation interesting style nothing to go home crazy about it was fine yeah i feel you yeah yeah um so yeah those are two of mine if you want to talk about another that's one nice i watched a hungarian movie animated uh called son of the white mare which Ooh. was just fucking incredible. Like, uh, just a pretty unbelievable visual uh, animated movie. Like, 
I had I hadn't heard about it until like about a year ago, I think. Um there was a restoration going and they were like, Hey, yeah, we're restoring this movie. It's like great. The same company that um I guess they morphed, but Cinelicious that put out Belladon of Sadness is now Arbalos. But they were the ones putting it out. So I was like, ooh, okay, like good like restoration company. They had put out some interesting stuff before. That I saw the trailer, I was like, ooh, weigh in on this thing. Um, had just been waiting for that fucking blue to drop, and it finally did. And, as expected, it's a fucking banger. Just really cool movie. Um, it's kind of like a folk tale about, uh, like a powerful man who's born, born of a horse. And, um, <laughs> kind of, I think he's going to the underworld to, like, save three princesses from these like different castles so it's pretty basic like mythy narrative but a lot of really really cool animation um each of the like people that he's fighting to like save the princesses are the different like elements almost there's like a rock one and then there's like an electricity guy and then there's almost like a pixely like box guy and to see, like, 2D animation be almost, like, boxy? I don't know. It was just certain things that I had never seen done in other movies before. And just had a really, really unique art style that I was all about. To the point where it's like, why hasn't someone just, like, fucking ripped this off yet? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I wish I could draw good enough to rip this movie off because it looks so cool. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't know. I was just super impressed by it, and it's it was one that I, uh, now I'm like, well, shit, this person has a bunch of movies. Why haven't I seen them? You know what I mean? This yeah. one seems like kind of the most, uh, um, wow, he has one called Johnny Corncob. It's pretty amazing. But, uh. Johnny Corncob. <laughs> yeah. But uh, has also been active, like, up, because I think that was 81 that that came out, and he's, like, made a movie in 2011. So still, I don't know if he's still alive, but reasonably still around working, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I was just like pretty, I think it's on Criterion now as well. It's streaming on the Criterion channel. Um, I would say it's worth, worth checking out. It was really, really cool. I like the, I like the title, Son of the White Mare. It's kind of, Mm -hmm. kind of cool. Reminds me of like the opposite of like a nightmare, you know. No, that's yeah. Cool. Um, Kill the flick. Check it out. Check it out. Gotta check it out. Gotta check it out. <laughs> gotta check it out. Gotta check it out. Gotta check it out. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, so which ones do I want to talk about? Um, so I, I, I also on the plane I watched Bill and Ted Face the Music. You know, if I'm going to watch that? a movie on the plane, I'm going to throw it on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not good, dude. <laughs> yeah, but a bit of a bummer. Oh, rough. It yeah. was rough. I think it seemed like more people enjoyed it more than me, like other critics and uh-huh. uh, just people on Letterboxd. But yeah, I wasn't a, wasn't a big fan. There was, there was some fun stuff, but it's like one of those, it's like, guys... You, you guys are why are we doing this sequel you know like yeah why'd you make this it's no, just totally no, no one really needed it like, no, no one needed was, it like, let's, no one was let's craving bring that it. one back you know yeah it was uh pretty cringy at, at times um, yeah the trailer like looked weird the look of it was weird i thought yeah. at least from the footage i saw i was like the seemed really like strangely fake and like glossy like too glossy almost if that makes sense Mm, yeah i mean it had okay cg and stuff um Mm. but it definitely tried to have that like glossy cinematic look to it um with the flares and yeah um and man keanu reeves did not just did not look good in the movie he he looked like he looked like professor snape you know, like <laughs> his hair was like Professor Snape hair, and then he yeah. was like clean shaven, 
And then it, yeah, he not just his like look now. It didn't. He didn't sell the part well at all. It was just. It was weird. It's just weird. Yeah. So, uh, you know, unless you're on a plane, don't don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've got I've got one more after this, and I'm done. Okay. I watched. Um, I didn't talk about Kundun on the last one, did I? I don't think so. The Scorsese movie. Have you seen this? No. I watched Kundun? it. Kundun. Yeah. K U N D U N. I watched it um in high school when I was like I love Scorsese. I had like just seen all his move like Goodfellas, you know, and I'm like buying all his movies to watch them. And it, this was just like I was like, oh, this is like kind of boring, but like whatever, you know what I mean? Like where's where's the other Goodfellas in here? <laughs> you know, it was like kind of yeah. And holy shit, is this movie fucking cool? Like it is really good. I was. I've seen this I, cover before. Like yeah, in, totally. Back in the like blockbuster days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a movie about the Dalai Lama, and it is a banger. Roger Deakins yeah. cinematography, Ooh. Philip Glass score, and Damn. the movie is like wall to wall score. There's maybe like five minutes that's not score. And the whole wow. movie is just, like, constantly building. The editing is so good. The cinematography and score are so good. The story is super interesting. It's, like, also, wow. like, three hours long, and it was not hard to get through at all. It was just, like... Or I don't know if it's three hours. It's a long one, though. I Yeah. Well, and, Scorsese, um, so... <laughs> yeah. It was... Uh, the thing just fucking moves, and it is just a treat. Oh, it's two hours and 14 minutes. Oh, okay. So it is pretty short relatively so, to a three hour movie. But, um. Yeah. Still on the longer side, but. Yeah, uh, longer film. But. Yeah. I would say worth checking out. Fucking good. It's the same yeah. length as Black Widow. Oh, wow. Yeah. I would say <laughs> it maybe allocated its time a little better. Yeah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but man, that's cool. I I forgot this film existed. Yeah, it was um, one that I had always I'd been like, oh yeah, it's it's like good, whatever, you know. But yeah, Kino yeah. Kino had put it out on Blu-ray. Not may, honestly, probably a fucking year ago now. It's been sitting on my shelf, but I got it when it came out, and yeah, just don't know why I had not revisited it yet it's a very very good movie just like holy shit this is good just all the i don't know the editing the i think the editing especially like just all around technically because then i'm like oh yeah but also the score but also the cinematography it's just all very well done um just uh just a fucking killer movie and i guess uh they portray because it's all about like or it's not all about. It charts the Dalai Lama from when he was a child to when um, China was kind of, like, taking over Tibet. And they're, like, you know, kind of, like, trying to impose their force on them and stuff. So the, the Chinese government did not like the movie. And I guess Disney, who is partially somehow bankrolling this, um, hmm. issued an apology to score about the movie and in the apology like a public apology for making it said the the best part about it is no one saw it or something like that there's this whole like weird story about how the like aftermath of releasing it and i think disney opened up a theme park in like shanghai or something um as like an apology or, or part of a deal because they were up China was upset that I don't know it was like they they were gonna like ban all Disney movies from China or something like that it caused some like huge thing oh jeez um, but yes yeah, so that was also not telling the story very well because I this was a while ago I watched it but it was also just like an interesting thing to dive into after watching the movie and just being like oh wow it was not received well it like bombed and everyone hated it. <laughs> including oh, wow. including the studio that made it was like yeah it's bad <laughs> no one saw it you know like Jesus. Um, but it's not it's extremely good so 
Oh, worth, good. Worth the watch. Good Marty. Good old Marty, man. Good old Marty. Through. He's still got his vision, you know? It's mm-hmm. like. What do you think? I feel bad for him. Let, let Marty make a movie about the Dalai Lama. It's going to be bad? Come on. Come on. <laughs> it's, we're talking about Marty here. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love that guy. <laughs> Marty. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, I would highly recommend. You should check it out. Yeah, I, that's definitely one I'll have to look out for. Um, yeah, I'm definitely interested. Um, last one I'll talk about is, I think, uh, oh, sorry. Okay. Excuse me. Um, I talked about it a little bit last episode, but I started watching this series on HBO called Exterminate All Brutes. Oh, yeah. Um, and I finished it. And uh, I just want to go out there and say hey, you should watch it again. <laughs> and other people will listen yeah. to this. Um, nice. Really good documentary series, four parts. Um, going into like the history of uh, colonialism and racism throughout mm-hmm. history. And it's actually really interesting um, where it pulls information and how it links it in a non-linear fashion uh, Mm. throughout history um, done by a black filmmaker. um, And I don't, Oh, uh, Raul, Raul Peck. He also um, uh, voiceovers the whole thing. And um, I don't know. It's really interesting. It's really interesting style of documentary too. how, how it goes about stuff. And it mixes this um, nonfiction, like nonfictional, like documentary style of Mm. archival footage I've never seen of like Hitler, world war two. Um, Oh wow. Stuff I've never seen before. and brings that in. So that's fascinating too. Um, but also, um, has this like really nicely shot, um, fictional narrative. Ooh. Artistic aspect to it where it stars Josh Hartnett as like this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hartnett. He's, um, he's back he's in this and he's sort of like um it's 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 sort of like an artistic i think expression more than like a clear narrative because he Mm -hmm. kind of travels through time and then and like you see him throughout the throughout the series in different parts of history as from Mm -hmm. this like from the 1800s as like this uh slave owner to like a cowboy and then he sort of like goes through time a bit and then he's like in africa um and then at the end he sort of reckon you know he comes to reckon with the stuff that he's done uh and it was just it's really fascinating how i tied it all in um nice. and i recommend it it's on hbo oh, yeah. max um exterminate all the brutes four part series recommend hell yeah yeah, I need to watch that. Yeah, I li- I've been liking the the documentary hybrid stuff. I feel like that's always interesting. So, check it out, dude. Oh, yeah. Check it out. And also, I'm number one. You know, I mean, I do run the Josh Hartnett uh, heartthrob fan page. So. <laughs> He's still got it, man. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I guess really quick, I'll mention that I watched Promising Young Woman. I did too. That was the other movie I watched on the plane. Oh, nice. Which I uh, liked a lot of aspects of, but didn't really wrap up in a way um, that I... Like, I get, but I didn't really want or think was best, maybe. Like, I think they could have come up with something better. I don't know. I'm with you. I actually felt a little disappointed because... um, a couple friends had recommended it to me mm-hmm. and uh and i had seen that it had you know good good reviews and was well received yeah it's up for best picture wasn't it it's crazy yeah what <laughs> yeah really <laughs> weird <laughs> yeah um i th- there's definitely stuff i liked about it and yeah, there's definitely oh, yeah. aspects i liked about it but i was a little disappointed overall i think it um it sort of got confused and it's messaging i feel like a bit and then it the Mm -hmm. and then near the end yeah just sort of it it's not a very satisfying ending not that 
endings have to be satisfying, but no, but it it makes its point. It builds towards something, and then it doesn't really, yeah, like it achieve what uh, I think it's sort of setting out to do. Mm-hmm. And like I get what it's trying to say with the ending that it does have, but I also think that a message doesn't always like translate in a satisfying way to a movie. So like while I understand the it conceptually I do think and also yeah it's like it does I like movies that don't end satisfyingly. I don't need to be like satisfied yeah. by it, but it it wasn't it wasn't satisfying because I just already knew that that was their point. You know, so it was like yeah, okay, like sure. It didn't really feel like it added anything, and it felt kind of out of place. So, just something about like the last third just kind of wasn't, uh, didn't feel in yeah. line with the rest of the movie. And it does suck, because I thought all the performances were good. Like, like yeah. I like Carrie Mulligan and like Laverne Cox and Bo Burnham. It's like, oh, this is like a cool cast, you know? And, like, yeah, I mean, Bo- I love Bo Burnham. I didn't, I didn't even know he was in the movie, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I saw he was in it. I was like, "All right, cool." He has his part, and then it's like, "No, he actually has a major acting part." Yeah, he's him. like, he's in the movie. <laughs> you he's know, in the he's movie. like really in it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, he, I thought he did great. Yeah, all the performances are great. Carrie Mulligan was awesome. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I got the messaging and all that, and I think the messaging, you know, is kind of cool, badass, whatever. But, um, yeah, I just. I, don't know. I guess I was just a little disappointed. I thought it still worth a watch. I'd say, um, yeah, not after our glowing review, but uh, <laughs> I and it did pull off certain things pretty well. Like there was like a twist that I thought was really effective in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. Just at a certain point, it was kind of like what? Eh, I don't know. Not for me. Not for me anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But apparently it works for a lot of people. Uh, yeah. it was like you said, it was nominated for best picture. So yeah. I still think that's really strange though. Definitely. It was also in the, 2020. It was released. Yeah. Cause it's not like it's bad. I didn't hate it. You know, it's like, I feel like it's like three and a half star movie for me, but it just didn't, yeah. it felt like such a movie that I don't know who put it out, but like magnet or like neon would put out and it'd just be like a cool little indie movie that you watch. You're like, yeah, that was cool. totally, you know, Totally. Not like, uh, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got Banger. it. Out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Best picture. Holy shit. You got to watch this thing. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, it's interesting. We happened to watch several of the same, same stuff without even yeah. coordinating. Yeah. Yeah. But uh all right. Well, with that, that's going to wrap it up for what we've been watching. Um we're going to get into our non-spoiler review for Black Widow starting right now. We have to go back to where it all started. Where did you think I was all this time? We have unfinished business. My girls are the toughest girls in the world. I'm sorry. We had our orders and we played our rules. It wasn't real. It was real to me. To me, you were everything. so this is black widow uh people know who black widow is from marvel cinematic universe uh this is about natasha romanov and her quest between the films civil war and infinity war i'm just gonna go ahead and say even though we're not in the spoiler segment for this movie, just know that there are spoilers, obviously, for like Avengers, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know, Civil yeah. War through Infinity War. Like that, it's just 
is going to happen because the nature of this film, right? So mm. um, just throwing that out there. If you haven't seen Civil War, Infinity War, don't even listen to this review. But um, this movie was directed by Kate Shortland and uh, stars Scarlett Johansson, Florence Pugh, David Harbour, as well as Rachel Weisz uh, and Ray Winstone. Yeah, Ray um, Winstone's the villain. Yeah. So we're going to just talk about our overall thoughts about the movie, and then we'll get into spoilers on on that. Um, we both watched this uh, on Disney Plus Premiere Access. Um, it's also playing in theaters. Uh, so, Zach, what did you think about the movie overall? Um, I thought it was it was pretty good. I didn't love it, but I didn't like dislike it. Um, it didn't. I felt like it took a while to kind of pick up. I kept like expecting something to happen that wasn't. Um, but it's also nice because I feel like to a point it was pretty small scale, which is like an interesting switch up in the universe. You know what I mean? I also yeah. think that it looked uh, a little more distinct than some of the other ones. It kind of like had its own vibe a little more visually and yeah. um also stood on its own more because i don't know if it's spoiler to say that there's not really any like marvel cameos or anything re- really like yeah oh, yeah it's not like it's not like falcon's like showing spoil. up you know what i mean <laughs> like it focuses on her in. story yeah there's really no one it's yeah. yeah it's not like oh but let's see what this avenger is also doing you know which i feel like a lot of them do yeah. Um, Cause this, you know, this is taking place sort of like. What's interesting about that? Uh, sorry, sorry to cut you off a bit, but just no, you're like, fine. um, it's in between two movies, right? So we know where those mm-hmm. characters are, right? So they're not showing up. This yeah. is like she kind of runs off and does this little side thing. And that's what this movie is. Mm-hmm. So interesting in that way. I don't think there's another Marvel movie like that. Yeah, because for the most part, it was pretty pretty like linear as they came out right? they're all like sequential yeah yeah this and then one which like, one was this between post-civil war pre uh post-civil war pre-infinity war okay yeah so like the civil war captain america civil war thing is like going on ish mm-hmm. and it's before thanos shows up yeah yeah for sure so before the world ending events yeah because yeah. that would also make sense why it's not she's not she's yeah. just able to like go do other shit she's not like oh yeah like we're all gonna be fucking dead <laughs> you know what i mean yeah like- <laughs> yeah and i mean like i said there's gonna be spoilers for infinity war and Endgame and stuff like that so if you're watching this hopefully you've seen those but like she dies in Endgame, right so this is clearly like yeah a it's a prequel to that stuff so mm-hmm. yeah um but what yeah i pretty much yeah, I pretty much agree with you. Um, it was kind of it was a little bit better than I expected, but I didn't like love it, and I didn't mm. I didn't dislike it either. Um, it did feel a little long to me. Yeah, uh, and it slog. did. Yeah, a bit of a slog. It dragged in places. Um, but yeah, overall, I had like a decent time watching it. I um, I I like all the Marvel movies for the most part. I feel like uh, past that initial like phase one stuff. There's there's some gems in there like Iron Man and stuff, but um, you know, I feel like they've just progressively gotten better and they've gotten in a rhythm that's sort of just like these are all entertaining, um, yeah, more or less. And um, yeah, no, I I liked it. I I thought the performances were good. I thought um, I liked Scarlett Johansson. She's really come into her own into this character and sort of felt like a good wrap up for her. You know, closure on her story mm-hmm. a bit which I, should have happened a long time ago yeah um, but i also feel like while it definitely felt like the purpose of it was like a trade-off because it's florence well is this spoiler well that might be spoiler um i, I don't know what's <laughs> yeah i'll stay away from it but it did kind of feel like uh while it felt like it was very much like a wrapping up of her character it also kind of felt to me, it was kind of like, uh, 
I feel like she was the character that had been like shortchanged in the Avengers like the whole time. She was like always yeah. in it the least. But then it also kind of felt like a weird send off for a character in a way. Like Yeah. Which maybe this is the wrong time to bring up and we can talk about it more in spoilers, but Bring it up in spoilers. Try yeah. and try and remember that. Yeah, yeah. But um But yeah, no, I I, I agree. It's um, it did sort of kind of wrap up her story, sort of send her off, and uh, yeah, I'm glad that she had it, did not have it, but I feel like it should happen sooner. Um, mm-hmm. to have yeah, it just movie. feels like an afterthought where it's like, oh yeah, we should have given that character its its time and day, you know, but yeah. it's like removed, like out of the timeline of everything yeah. else, and also like doesn't feel as substantial. So like. While I feel like I generally, when we like review these movies, I'm always like, I kind of wish it was more isolated and small scale. You know what I mean? And I feel like this one was, but then this one also feels weird in that capacity because it feels like it's this like almost like an obligatory like Scarlett Johansson movie. You know what I mean? Because it came out after, right? Yeah, it it doesn't really fit in the in the timeline. Like it feels weird. It like feels kind of weird as a follow up to the like cr- all the crazy shit that happened in the other one you know what i mean right yeah um no but yeah i do like that it was like smaller scale and one one thing i like really enjoyed too was just even the aspect of like the black widow suit being integrated into like mm-hmm. um as you see that she goes and this is not a spoiler but she goes back to her past and goes into where yeah. she was her training or whatever but they really integrate that like look into like the other parts so you sort of see like um these other assassins with that sort of same look calling mm-hmm. back to like her actual outfit and i thought that was kind of a cool just like world building aspect totally um, a way in. to like make it more her outfit and like costume like a little more substantial to her character and like give it yeah like as opposed to just like yeah she wears cool leather because she's like hot you know right yeah (laughs) exactly (laughs) oh and one other thing i was going to mention too about what you were saying is like um she, she wasn't necessarily in it the least i'd say or you know she but she was like she had small parts in like a ton of the marvel movies like throughout yeah marvel cinematic universe and she's mm-hmm. one of the most um ongoing characters she just shows up in like all of them showed up in iron man 2 was the yeah, first one her first she was like one. and that's like when they were like sort of just announcing that they're going to lead into avengers mm. so it was like iron man and then she was like the second one you yeah. know that they, they were sort of being and, and hulk was around so it was sort of like oh shit um, so she was like one of those surprise characters that were announced and then she's had parts through like a lot of the movies all like you know captain america civil war the avengers and um yeah. and now she finally had her own and at this point i feel like she really has come into the character she felt um more confident and stuff and um i feel I, one thing i do want to say is like one of the negatives is like near the end i thought because i had heard complaints about the cg mm-hmm. and i was i was like where are the complaints at what why until there's like a moment uh where they're like in the air it's in the trailer i think yeah where they're like flying out of the air where there's like a green screen and yeah. there's there's some stuff that kind of looks rough there like yeah really, really rough i feel like they they overreached a little bit with the finale because there's even some like simple stuff that kind of looked weird like there's like that fist fight in front of the hologram thing that felt really weird there's like oh yeah there's like a holog a red hologram of like a map yeah. of, of the world yes and yeah. there's like a big fist fight going on but like i thought the map turned off and then they're fist fighting and then i'm like what are all these red lens flares they look really added in and then it was like, right. oh, oh, they're in front of that hologram. And then it was like, oh, this looks kind of weird. <laughs> you know, it's just like not, uh, yeah. it seemed like it was like a, a concept that it was like, oh, this will like make this fight like more visually interesting. 
but then yeah. maybe that they like had to add it in or maybe they didn't have it and they're like we need to make this more visually interesting so they added that in later or something i don't know i i didn't think it's like a good idea but it felt really weird i was like whoa this looks weird like i just remember being distracted by that a little bit aside from the visuals there were like some moments and and scenes that played out that i felt either was in the writing or the directing or maybe even the editing but there were like some scenes that played out that like felt off they like felt weird like sort of the pacing or maybe there was the, i can't quite place my thumb on it but it was like either the dialogue or it was like the directing the way they were i don't know there are certain like scenes like just before that fight scene that you're talking about mm-hmm like the dialogue being exchanged and there's like several slog moments that felt uh just really strange and maybe that's because this this is from a director who's done a lot of like really low budget um like really low budget small indie films Mm -hmm. and that then she which you know a lot of you know marvel's been doing that handing handing their movies over to indie directors which is awesome but yeah um also lends itself to being like i'm not sure if it there's just like moments that like didn't feel like it matched a genre or um yeah just sort of slogged a bit and just like the pacing felt weird with the dialogue i don't know um but there are several moments where i was just like this is weird like why is this happening like Mm -hmm. there's just like several scenes like that for me so that 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 brought it down Mm -hmm. in stars for me yeah. yeah, there was a lot of, uh, it felt like expositional scenes in the middle that there was just no other way to, like, incorporate them. So they just yeah. kind of felt awkward. Like, the, there wasn't, like, any more purpose than giving getting across some information real quick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, and I feel like that kind of held it up at times. Like, yeah, like some scenes with Florence Pugh, even when she's by herself, just sort of sort of felt. And she's a great actress, so I don't even think it was on her. It's just, um, mm-hmm. yeah, just some scenes that sort of felt off to me. Um, I also thought the um, score was not great, and it was yeah, done it was by weird. it was done by Lauren Balf, who's done you know a lot of big stuff, and. Um, I just wasn't crazy about it. Yeah, I remember thinking much like a lot of these other aspects that we're talking about, just at mm-hmm. times being like, this is kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Like, just something about it was weird. And it, yeah. it kind of sucks in a way, because like I was saying, it's like, it was trying to do all the things that I always am like, I wish Marvel movies would do that more, you know? Yeah, And it's like doing them, but then it didn't, something about it just like wasn't quite successful, you know? Maybe it's it's that it didn't do it enough, or it was like beholden to the other ones in different ways. I don't, I don't even really know, you yeah. know what I mean? Like I can't even really put my finger on a lot of what like the weirdness was. That's like with a lot of this movie, I feel like it's... Yeah. Um, yeah crazy like he did um mission impossible fallout um the score for that and i remember i when that movie came out i actually like would listen to that soundtrack because it's actually a really good soundtrack or uh, score yeah i, say. I remember and, it being um, cool and it's like good just great moments and great like um audio cues and and good little themes that would, would build i just didn't get that from from black widow for for that so yeah, it was weird. Um, but uh, all that being said, I'm not sure what else to say outside of spoilers. Yeah, I feel like we got to get into. I I keep thinking of things, and it's like no nope, spoiler okay. town. All right, well let's. Uh, I think overall, like our non-spoiler thoughts are, um, you know, we 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 didn't dislike it. We didn't we didn't love it. It was okay. Had some weird moments. Felt a little long. Yeah, it was pretty fine. Like, I wasn't, like, it wasn't offensive, but it wasn't uh, much to get excited about, also. You right. Because, like... But, yeah. Yeah. 
Go ahead. I was just looking um, through the IMDb and it's like, like some of these characters are like, oh yeah, that guy, like the guy who just gets her tech. It's just like, this guy's a character. He has a character poster. Who's that guy? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right? Just like, sh- like shit that was just weird that it's like, it was there like a longer edit? Was this movie way longer? And it like got like axed because it's still too long. So mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Just kind of weird. I think yeah. one more thing I do I forgot to mention is um as a fan of Marvel comics uh I I wasn't crazy about how they integrated Taskmaster who is like the sort of assassin character. Mm-hmm. Um it just and I don't want to like I don't know. I I feel like that's something to get into spoilers, but um I just uh as someone who's a fan of Taskmaster, I thought they the way they integrated the character and bent it to this narrative was maybe the wrong way to do it. I, I rather would have them just like created a new character than to take yeah, Taskmaster use... and like bend it to this. I would have just like created a new character for that. Is what yeah. I. Um, is it kind of took like an iconic villain and it then made it sort of not unsatisfying. the same. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not familiar with that character, but I will say that that if if i was a fan of that character from the comics i would be really disappointed that that was the character in this movie Um, well now you make me feel better about it (laughs) yeah just because it was like oh who's this like who's this like purge looking person looks like someone from the purge right (laughs) Uh, you know the original character is like a sword slinging um sort of looks like uh He's he's just like he's got a skull for a head and has a um, oop, and has um a hood, yeah, and kind of looks like oh yeah, I've what's his name from Conan him. almost um, yeah. the villain from Conan but like has a sword and is like an assassin. Looking up and, the I'm looking at like the, him from the comics. I definitely yeah. remember the character. Yeah, you've seen him before. Like mm-hmm. he's throughout Marvel stuff. Um. Yeah. Anyway, wasn't crazy about that, and felt almost like a pull to make it more ingrained into the Marvel comics, and then just like not satisfying that. Um, yeah. But all right. Well, let's get into our non. Oh. Into our spoiler segment. I'd like to interject to discuss that special deal from our sponsor again. For the listeners of the Listen to Us Roundabout Movies podcast, Audible is offering a free audio book download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. To download your free audio book today, go to audibletrial.com slash L-T-U-R-A-N. Again... That's audibletrial.com slash L-T-U-R-A-N for your free audio book. One thing's for sure. I'm done running from my past. guess one thing also that i forgot to uh i guess that we could have talked about in non-spoiler was just those fucking brutal opening credit scene did not like the opening credit scene personally um trying to oh like the beginning like with the kids and everything soft the soft cover of smells like teen spirit oh yeah 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 the like weird like it almost felt like uh, like early two thousands like music video, like you mean the weird, actual like, like edit of the, yeah of like, the opening the like opening credit sequence. I know, agree. It was yeah. really weird. Just like set like such a weird tone for this movie. Like isn't this I supposed agree. to be like a like a weird like spy movie? It's, it's supposed like, to be spy like yeah yeah. 
Yeah, which it didn't, by the end, didn't really feel very spy-like. In the beginning, felt pretty spy-like. And I was like, ooh, this is spy, spy-ish. But, but even by the end, it's like, it, I feel like it didn't have as much spy, on a uh, espionage genre that, like, yeah. I almost wanted. I almost wanted, like, more totally. because it's Black, it's Black Widow, you know? That's what you yeah. sort of expect. Because I guess it's like they, they made it smaller scale, they made it less like the others, but they didn't make it any more of a genre movie in any other direction. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. like it is it is those things, but I think in order to maybe be more successful, you would actually need to like make it like push it more towards that genre. And yeah. It felt like it was like just like a little bit like it because they're like Russian. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, so and it also yeah. had if it, it felt like almost like the Disney blend of like family and 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 mm-hmm. pushing pu- pushing that onto it which is fine yeah. i i it's actually a didn't weird. i didn't hate the opening like scene i didn't hate the opening scene yeah like her but, as a kid and stuff yeah didn't mind that i didn't either but i don't know i just wish it was more like more spy like you make make it like mission impossible you know like make yeah. it mm-hmm. and it just had like these weird shifts and 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 slogs and time i don't know yeah not, not I, a not a perfect movie but what i was gonna say earlier about um it being like her send off or whatever is i do think it's kind of weird to set because it's her send-off it's her last movie but it's also totally like a setup for florence Pugh, right like be like a new marvel character it's like it seems it felt very much like it's like a movie where they're kind of going back after everything being like let's give scarlett johansson her due but actually let's like set up a new character to replace her which felt like more of the goal to me then i don't think it's more of the goal but i do think that they i mean they are going to be integrating her into like this new thing um of -hmm. the new generation you know beyond the initial avengers um Mm -hmm. did you watch the after credits scene yeah totally okay uh were you surprised by that cameo yeah, and then I read about it, and she was in she was in one of the other ones, right? She's in but this um, was, she's in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, but this was technically supposed to be her Before. first intro. Like uh, but the movie got pushed back, right? Correct. You're right. Yeah. I didn't think about it like that. Still worked, but yeah, because yeah, it felt like a reveal to me. I was like, oh shit, I did not know she was going to be in all this, and then it was like, oh, yeah. she was. Then I was like, oh, well, this was supposed to come out before that, so... Yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. That yeah, was supposed to come out. That was supposed to be the first initial reveal. So there's this, like, fan theory, and I feel like it has legs, since mm. we're in spoilers. Speculation and spoilers for future stuff. Um, she's sort of, like, the new... Like, an offset of, like, a, the like next generation of mm. Avengers... Um, she's and I just forget like what they're. Nick Fury. Yeah, she's kind of like new Nick Fury, but for mm-hmm. like a band of heroes that aren't like totally good necessarily. Yeah. And there's like a thing in the comics. There's like a name for them. They're not the Avengers. They're like something else. Um, I don't know, like the Bone Crushers or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but like oh, yeah. they're like a different generation of like a band of heroes. So it's gonna be her. Is gonna be um uh the new hawkeye girl who shows she's having her own show mm-hmm. um which actually florence pew is going to be in oh okay because you remember at the end credits she shows her hawkeye's picture mm-hmm. that leads into the hawkeye show which is next and is that still happening like with jeremy yeah. renner as hawkeye uh so it's it's more about his they daughter who, yeah I was like, how are they going to get Jeremy Renner out of there? Because that dude got canceled, and they are not about to make a Jeremy Renner show. Did he Did he get canceled? I think so. Kind I of. I don't know about this. I don't know oh, about this. Damn. Yeah, he was like, 
it was, there was like a whole thing about him, his wife, uh, him just like gaslighting his ex-wife and like uh, holding on to their child or something and not returning the kid, but also like having, while he was like looking after their daughter, like having like orgies or like group sex Oh and, my like, god! Like leaving cocaine in like the like family bathroom and stuff like that, like, <laughs> just like like crazy shit like that. Where it was like, Let, and then I was I read a bunch of stuff like, is he gonna be Hawkeye still? Like after that happened? Wow, I didn't know so about like, any of this. This was like a little while ago because it was it was shortly after his app took off because he canceled the app. <laughs> he had an app. Oh my god! You don't know about the Jeremy Renner app? No, man, oh way out god, on the so Jeremy good. Renner fandom here um oh yeah I, I had a deep dive for sure he had a fucking I see, app yeah i have it right here i don't know if you can see total side tangent here jamie renner <laughs> <laughs> what is this it was a it was a it place. just has his face on it <laughs> yeah let me see there was an intro video i didn't delete it but um let me see if i can oh record. no is it a music it's, video no it's okay it's just like oh, an intro I, yeah is it still available? I don't know if you can download the app, but I have it. Uh, I never made an it. I never made an account, but it has this video intro from him where he's like, "This is an app for people who just uh, fans of mine who want to connect and hang out." And it was almost like following. It was like a private social media where Jeremy oh Renner just like, "Oh my god!" Jeremy Renner just like posts stuff, I guess, on this app, and everyone's like, "Yeah, we love you, Jeremy." <laughs> like I don't know. It seemed really funny. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it's he's a douchebag. <laughs> he's a oh yeah, douche definitely, bag. definitely knew he was before too. <laughs> just like this guy, there's just a dark secret about this guy for sure, and I cannot put my finger on it. But it doesn't sucks. surprise me at all that he had like orgies and like cocaine everywhere. Like, does not shock me at all. Yeah, yeah, that was part of it. And there were like texts that came out of him like being like an absolute child to his wife and like being just like. Nothing, like, technically criminal, I don't think, but, like, shit that's just, like, oh, yeah, you left, like, coke out, like, in front of your daughter. Pretty bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, while, you were ha- while you were having group sex, while you were supposed to be looking after, pretty bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Well, anyway, uh, I, I think he's, I mean, I, he's still Hawkeye, you know, but yeah. I don't. I figured, though, because it was probably going to phase him show. out. It was gonna, gonna be his fa- show, right? So no, no, it's 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 gonna be it's the, it's the Hawkeye show, but I think it's yeah. like was that always his... the plan though? That's what I want to know. I think so for the show. Okay, okay. Like just they're trying, they really are trying to phase out. You know, they're going to the like new generation. Yeah. You know, of of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, mm-hmm. So it's more about the like daughter, I guess, training to be the next yeah. one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Florence Pugh is going to be, I mean, she might, it seems like she might be the villain because she's going to be hunting down Hawkeye. Oh yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah no. That'd be cool. But, um, back to our original, original point. Um, yeah. So I think, uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus, she's like the new Nick Fury who's trying to like recruit people for like this sort of morally gray Avengers group. Mm. Yeah nice i don't know everyone who's in it Mm -hmm. um there's a rumor that you know ross commander ross who is in the hulk movies and in civil war he's like the commander guy who's trying to arrest black widow in the beginning oh yeah totally played by uh played by uh, william hurt right yeah william hurt yeah um there's because he's he's the original um like bad guy like one of the bad guys in the hulk movie way back when with edward norton yeah so that's still they're like that's canon for this is that's that still one? canon yeah okay. oh yeah 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 so that goes way back and he was he was one of the guys in civil war that like was about the accords and so mm-hmm. that's that was his tie-in um but there's a thing in the comics i guess where he becomes red hulk Oh shit! There's a, there's a Hulk who's red, and it might be him, mm. and he might Damn. be in this group, like this Julia, Julia Louis Dreyfus group. Yeah, strange. 
So would yeah. it not? It wouldn't be the Avengers. So like the Avengers would technically just be done. Like there's not going to be a new Avengers. Uh, I think they're still going to hold on to the like new Avengers, like Spider Man, and um, okay. some of the other main people will mm. still be in it. Probably um, Scarlet Witch and stuff. Yeah, and they'll be called the New Avengers. I'm just basing off comics and speculation. Yeah. And then there For might sure. be this other group, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I didn't know if it was like if the idea was that Avengers, Avengers is done. Here's the new one. Cause the original like Avengers so, are done. Yeah, like they're done, but I feel like they're like. Marvel will still make movies like Avengers, blah, 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 Avengers, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah like, I feel, I feel like, like they're, they're not ditching the, the name of the franchise or like no. the, the property, essentially. They're they might evolve it a bit. They might yeah. evolve it a bit. Um, but yeah. And just like, I mean, it's become the, the Marvel comics in film form. It's insane. Yeah. It's, pretty, it's insane. It's pretty wild. It is wild. It's it's um it's literally unprecedented in movies to have like this ongoing interconnected universe in movies. It's insane. But um anyway. Um let's talk about Black Widow spoilers. Yeah. So we talked, you know, about the after credit stuff and all that. Um there was some things that you mentioned that uh you thought might be spoilers. Yeah, there was Florence Pugh. There's a couple things. Um. Oh, I didn't know if this one was spoiler. This is kind of more of a general thought, but in order to explain it, I feel like you need to talk about the their backstories or whatever. So I didn't know if that mm-hmm. was spoiler. Um, gotcha. But I thought it, this is kind of a nitpick, but. I get that you can't have this movie where everyone speaks Russian with subtitles the whole time because it's fucking this super expensive Disney movie, you know? Right. But I found it really, the Russian accents really distracting and like strange. Like it's a strange choice, especially because, okay, so they're spies, right? And they are sent to Ohio to hide and like build up this whole thing while they're there and now they got to get the fuck out of there and like so they're okay so they're russian english is their second language but they're all at home alone speaking in an english like american accent and then the second that they're not they're gone like david harbour like walks up to the guy and like starts speaking english in a russian accent and it's just like Huh? And then like it reveals Rachel Vice later and she has a Russian accent and I guess it's like a twist cuz you don't necessarily know if the mom is like how much she's in on it or whatever. But they're all just like they're all Russian except for Scarlett Johansson. It's just like kind of <laughs> weird. <laughs> like I didn't really understand why. Like yeah. that seemed a little strange and unnecessary to me. Well, I think that I think the accents are a thing like and probably instead of speaking Russian or whatever, mm-hmm. the the accents are like they they put on an American accent when they're undercover, right? Yeah. Um, but it's even funny. It's funny because Scarlett Johansson, I think, like I think in Iron Man two and some of the stuff, she had and one, even some she? of Avengers, she had one, a very mm. small, slight one, and then she sort of like removed it throughout the movies because it was like whatever. Same with Scarlet yeah. Witch. She had like mm-hmm. a Russian accent, and then now it's just like gone. <laughs> yeah, um, that's funny. But uh, yeah, it is confusing. It's it's a weird choice. Yeah, because I, I just don't get why it's necessary. Like just especially just speak since English. Who cares right, and I, especially since like, um, Scarlett Johansson grew up in the same room as her sister, like the red room or whatever. Yeah, and that's what I that what that's what really it's like she would sense. have the accent too, like yeah, why and it's also just like I don't know, they I just it's it's a more of a complaint about movies in general, but it's just like they're all they you're in a room with all these characters that are supposed to be Russian, they're all just speaking like poor Russian accents with English dialogue. It's just weird. 
Just like drop like I don't get why it feels so necessary. Just like drop the accents. Who cares? Because they're like there's nothing really about. Is it like is it trying to remind you that they're just Russian? Because they're also just it's like because like, they're drinking vodka Russians. all the time. Yeah. Yeah, but just make it <laughs> just make it in Russian. Just like have the subtitles. I don't know. Yeah. Or like like no one does like Ray Winstone. He's not undercover. He's in a giant sky lab. Okay, so he had you know? a terrible Russian accent. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> it's like, terrible. It's just, like, so distracting. Like, just it's Especially it. because he has such a uh, distinct English accent, like, naturally. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. he always talks like this, and I'm Ray Winstone. You know, Ray like, Winstone. <laughs> yeah. I'm Ray Winstone. <laughs> yeah, like, very, like, Cockney, like, uh accents and but so he has that but like doing it in russian and it's just like it was awful <laughs> and it's pretty bad. and none of them were actually russian you know like i think all of the people who were doing like these crazy accents they're all like british people mm-hmm. so it was weird just it was weird so that's it's like little things like that sort of like add up to the film you know sort of be like yeah. things feel off things feel weird exactly yeah and it's like because big broader picture there was nothing there's no one thing that was like this is oh that's brutal or like i mean i didn't like those other credits but yeah Yeah, those kind of those are bad they were not very good yeah yeah it's just all these like weird choices that were small that just like make it feel weird it's like this just feels not quite right you know yeah but there's not a ton to point to of like why it's like bad it's not like bad but uh, yeah i don't know things like the accent it's like they're all in the same conditions why why do you feel like you need to have it just so they can because because there's nothing else about them that's russian aside from they drink vodka like a lot in the movie (laughs) you know what i mean and that's also like so goofy like it just felt kind of weird I didn't mind David Harbour doing it so much because he is like... Oh, yeah. I mean, it's fine. It was just like... He's just like more of a character because he's the Red Guardian. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's like this Russian, like... He's the Russian Captain America. Yeah. I know. But I agree. Overall, it's like it just... I did like like, that... Or what were you saying? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I did like... Because I'm not familiar with like his character or anything from the material so i'm not really either also being just kind of like for lack of a better term like a shitty version of captain america is kind of funny like he just has like a similar shield and it's like kind of just like similar suit and he's just like yeah i'm the russian captain america and i feel like they kind of like leaned into that a little bit which was funny um yeah i I thought it was funny how obsessed he was with you yeah. know, comparing himself a bit like i could have been as good as him and kept yeah, bringing up totally. his name and stuff that is yeah mm-hmm. i don't really know much about that character either though i did think it was weird though that they it took so long for him to like do anything really like yeah. in because they like he immediately they go to the house and he immediately just puts on his costume and they're like oh they're getting ready for this and then like a big action scene's about to about to bust out and he just gets shot with like thirty tranquilizers, and then yeah, so he just, didn't like, do anything. Kind of does, kind of does like a little bit of the ending <laughs> character, but like he's not, he's not really like doing a whole lot as the character in the movie. And it's also like when probably won't be in these other movies, right? Like I don't know if, if he's coming probably back not. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think so. so I it doubt seemed, it. It seemed kind of a weird, another thing where it was like, this is like the only opportunity for this character that they're like building up but then they don't really do anything with him he's just kind of like okay although also apparently on the adventure at the end you know apparently david harbour pitched two different um red guardian solo movies to marvel oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. amazing so maybe really that, funny maybe they'll do that i don't know <laughs> yeah his career is killing it right now so maybe a little bank on that yeah, he's trying to cash in. He's just he's like, give in. me the Red Guardian movie. I'm fucking in, Let's baby. Go. Stranger yeah. Things season seven, eight, yeah. nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no sudden move three. No sudden move yeah. four. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I 
felt was weird where he does kind of get to do something before the suit but he's like when the uh prison escape mm-hmm. he's like jumping on shit and you're like oh this guy's got like crazy powers and shit yeah um but i felt like that was another scene that like felt really weird like it was yeah. like sort of the blocking too where the helicopter was going over and then i sort of got lost and like the cg mm-hmm. surroundings of everything yeah and there's a lot of like, like I got lost in like the fake uh, environment that was going on, like because the helicopter was going, and then it sort of like felt like it was taking too long when that avalanche was going down. Yeah, and the helicopter like went one way, and then it like cut to another angle, and then I'm like, wait, what? Uh, and then it, and then it took too long for it to come back, and it just like felt weirdly blocked and timed. Yeah, that whole yeah, scene. And, like. They're like, get up on the second floor. And he's like, okay. And all these people are running at him. And then he like just moves them or like misses them. And then it, he seemingly just like climbs for a long time when it made it seem like, get up on the platform. He's like, okay. And then he just like got on it. It was like, how far, how, how high up is he climbing? Yeah. Another thing where it was just kind of confusing. Like, oh, are, what are they doing? Are they going to pick him up? Is he climbing up there? And it's like, oh, he yeah. seems... Like, when it cuts to wide, he seems like he's in the same spot, but he's also been moving this whole time, and they have right. too, but nothing's like changed. Weird. And then they, like, are, like, leaving, and it seems like they're leaving, and he's like, wait, come back! And then there's, yeah. like, a long pause of, like, what's happening, and then they turn back around and come back for him, and it's like, uh, okay. Yeah, like, weird. they couldn't have just done that, because she turns around and then goes sideways, and it's like, they came at it from the same man you couldn't have just like turned and gone sideways right away and got him yeah or at least like, a lot cut of up the like, part where they yeah it's just like why like why is that <laughs> why is there that like 15 seconds of suspense yeah you're just like <laughs> yeah it'd be really fucking weird if david Harbour just cut that out. out he's not in his suit yet it's on the poster that'd be weird if he died right now <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean like, yeah. like pretty sure he's gonna make it you know what i mean yeah um i thought i kind of liked the uh like i guess semi twist of um rachel weiss's character being like i'm betraying you but actually i set it up with black widow scarlett johansson the whole time you know Mm -hmm. yeah totally i thought that was a neat little Mm -hmm. twist because you're like oh she betrayed him damn it yeah like oh no she worked with her the whole time yeah it was good the, the like mask that. reveal was funny. I was like, whoa. Ho- like, hologram, like, mask. They, like, peel off the... They were, like, weird oh. hologram masks. I was like, what is going on for a second <laughs> so there? so fucking crazy. Because like, I the thought tech- there were, like, two. I thought there... I, honestly, I was, like, my mind started racing. Because I was like, oh, no. Did they, like, have two of her? And maybe they're gonna... And then I was, like, starting to go, like, oh, she's not dead. She's coming back. Yeah, for totally. a second. Like, it's oh, like, she's, is she a clone? And yeah, it's like, I was like, oh, no, oh they there's. Swapped. A... I was immediately going like, oh, she is a clone. Oh shit, they're setting it up for her to come back. She's not actually dead after in game. Blah blah blah. And I was like, no, no, no. Yeah. But then I was like, that doesn't make sense. What's happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be crazy though if they like retconned the last Avengers movie. That was that was actually a clone the whole time, and the real Scarlett right. Johansson that's, is like. That's what I was thinking. I was like, prison. oh shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, yeah. shit. And, but I was like, but then I was like, no, that doesn't make sense. Where, which one's Rachel Weiss? Like, what, what's happening? And mm-hmm. then, I was, then I was like, oh, okay, now nah, that makes sense. But there was like that moment of confusion, too, where I was like, I feel like the reveal wasn't as smooth as it could have been. Yeah, it was a little weird. Once again, it was kind of strange. Just kind of strange. It wasn't it's like, like it, off. it had the, it had the, Mission Impossible mask moment. Literal Mission mm. Impossible mask moment. But it didn't have that satisfying, like, reveal like, oh, shit, you know, like, yeah. yeah. It, it was just like, wait, I'm confused. Why are there two of them now? Yeah, and then it was like, oh, oh, okay. It's like, oh. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sort of a weird, sort of a yeah. weird way of going about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, another, another weird kind of nitpick i have and this is present in this but kind of in a lot of them um is like there's that scene where 
her and Florence Pugh are talking and she was like, she makes fun of the way she like flicks her head up when she's fighting. Mm-hmm. It's like, why do you always do that when you're fighting? Like that, like head turn thing. Yeah. She's like, yeah, what? Yeah. And it's like, I get it. It's like a fun beat because Scarlett Johansson always does the hair flip. Okay, sure. Because she does. Like, but, but also like, how does she especially, but anyone really know anything about the Avengers? Like, how does the world like know? Is there just like hours of like cell phone videos of people like outside of the buildings where they're fighting? Like, <laughs> like she didn't know they didn't know about each other, and they like reveal to each other that there's you know what I mean? Like, where have you been my whole life? I'm mad at you. I've never seen you know what I mean? But it's like, yeah. how does she know she does this hair flip? Because what footage is she watching of her fighting? She watching the movies? The <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like what? A, and a, it's kind of in the Spider Man movies too. It's and true. some of the other ones where it's just like, I get that the Avengers as an idea are really famous, but like, how do people know these specifics about them? Because a lot of the fights go on in like fucking space or like another dimension. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> like how does Florence you know fucking anything about how Scarlett Johansson fights aside from like the first movie where they fight like in the downtown area? Of the, yeah like, yeah you know what i mean it's just kind of yeah. strange it's sort of like a it's like a meta thing that um yeah when you like nitpick it, it's like that doesn't make sense <laughs> it makes no sense how would she that. know that <laughs> yeah. yeah and everyone's just like okay with all these things and like everyone can live their life without like the existential soul crushing thing of like a portal of like a million insect aliens coming out. They're just like, At yeah, any we moment. just take it, take it day to day. You know what I mean? It's like, what? <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, remember when uh, there was that terrifying video, cell phone video out of like a airplane of like a giant man, like stomping on people, you know, yeah, like, yeah. and I do think though, that that would be like an interesting thing to get into in one of these about like, would. how people like, like the relationship with that, you know the outside world i guess of yeah yeah because everything's so insulated but i just thought that was funny because she made that comment about the hair i was like i totally get that this is like a fun blockbuster like quip that they're doing but also yeah. how the fuck does she know that she does that she's oh, seen, her, totally. seen her like one time you know what yeah I mean? yeah like, how does she know that she how does she know that like that's her thing like <laughs> yeah just kind of funny yeah it is yeah it's interesting um all right. Well, I don't know if I have anything else to say, yeah. really. Yeah, I mean, I think we talked about most of it. There's not a lot to say. I guess I like that, for the most part, the even though there was some rough CG, the, like, the like crumbling sky palace was kind of fun at times. Like, in, like, a yeah. playing with action figures sort of, like, fun way of people, like, jumping off yeah, and falling things and... Um, yeah. Oh, Taskmaster. Going back yeah. to that. Yeah, I, I guess was, I was about to go back to that too. Yeah. So. Yeah, like I said, I wish that they had just done a new character for that because, and not that I have a problem with Taskmaster being a female. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, mm. and that reveal or whatever. But the way that they like took a like iconic villain and just sort of made it work for their narrative in an unsatisfying way where yeah, you just so, could have made a new character that would have accomplished the same thing. If that makes sense? Totally. So that's not like the backstory of that character at all. No, not at all. Yeah, that's really weird. Yeah. Cuz it's such like, it's such a throwaway character. Right. Like the way it's presented. And Taskmaster is supposed to be like this ongoing like really difficult assassin that the Avengers come across and they tease it in the beginning when you see Taskmaster, but his whole power mm. thing is like he mimics those he fights. So that's what makes yeah. him like really difficult. Um uh, because it's like he knows all of your moves. He knows their moves and can do the do them back at them. Mm-hmm. Um like he fights the Avengers, he fights uh he's in like a lot of Spider Man stuff or he's like Spider Man has to fight him off all the time, but like mm. He can't. He's like a very difficult person to defeat because, for one, he always comes back. He's never like fully defeated, and he's just like, he copies their moves. Yeah. Um. So it's almost like a mirror fighting image, and that's what the whole 
taskmaster he copies your like tasks um mm. and so i would have rather have had him like it's almost just like unsatisfying because like you could have had him be like an ongoing like character he she whatever um yeah. be like this ongoing villain um like he is in the comics she is in the comics and um but it I, now i feel like that's done like that, yeah like, like how are they bringing that character back there's no reason to there's no reason to so yeah. it's sort of like oh well guess we've never seen taskmaster again so it's just like as a comic fan it's like oh man um yeah at the same time it's like you know i i get that that reveal was supposed to be impactful emotionally like that was the daughter that she defeated just make it a different character just make it like a cool new different assassin yeah you can literally you could have make still had out. you could have still had the like female reveal thing you know mm. like oh it's really a female assassin like who cares you know like <laughs> yeah. just make but why did it have to be taskmaster i feel like that was just like a blockbuster poll you know to be like mm-hmm. oh well we we should make this someone that's known in the universe or whatever yeah and, and instead of like thinking ahead to when eventually they're gonna run out of shit and need to pull yeah. in new threads just being like all right who's the fucking guy that like we're not doing shit with just like all right yeah that, exactly that one you know like <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah, yeah like taskmaster is big in spider-man uh, so i don't think mm-hmm. i'll see that you know it's yeah. just sort of like a it's like a nerdy like damn <laughs> yeah for um, sure but whatever um i just wasn't it just felt like a weird um uh, integration of a character that didn't mm. need to happen. Yeah. Because they really do nothing. Could have very easily just like make a different cool mask. Because the design doesn't even look really that much like no, yeah. the character. Yeah, just have like a, a different mask and have everything else be the same. Fine. Mm. Like, um, but yeah. But I think that was my last comment. Yeah, I don't really have much more to say. All right. Well, we got to rank it. Let's rank this. Um, I'm I'm thinking I'm I'm giving it three stars. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm like a two and a half probably. That's fair. Maybe a That's light fair. three. Like I didn't. It's not something that I like hated while I'm watching it or anything that I was like bored. But it's just like, what value does this have for me? Like revisiting it. You know what I mean? It's like no. Yeah. <laughs> not much not, not much. much it's just really strange just strange vibe very strange vibes and i really like all the people that are in this like i like florence Pugh a lot yeah, i like great. um scarlett johansson um mm-hmm. i like david harper i like rachel weiss um, like ray winstone but, um, he was really I like bad. Ray winstone. <laughs> <laughs> but he's he's not that good in this movie <laughs> yeah he's pretty bad in it he's pretty it, bad in it i got excited when i saw that he was the villain i was like hell yeah and then it's like oh he's just like a yeah. guy in a suit who like yells at people like oh okay like he doesn't really like, do anything and it was such like i don't know his character was just like now that we're talking about it, it's like he wasn't a very complicated villain too much he's like oh i've been in the shadows using my red room of assassins and now i'm pulling the strings and now i can finally reveal myself to power and it's just sort of was like yeah. okay eh. <laughs> <laughs> all right but like don't <laughs> no <laughs> but also you have the worst russian accent i've ever heard. <laughs> yeah yeah it was pretty rough <clears throat> But yeah, I'm 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 I've rested on three stars. You've given it two and a half. That's pretty fair. Um, so that's gonna wrap it up for this review of Black Widow. As always, you can find other episodes of this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Pod pa- Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, and if you enjoy the show, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes because every rating brings more listeners. You can email us at listen to us rant about movies at gmail.com. 
You too can be a producer and or supporter of this podcast by visiting our Patreon page and becoming a monthly patron for as little as one dollar. Visit www.patreon.com slash L-T-U-R-A-N podcast. All right, that's going to wrap it up. Thanks, Ronnie. Thanks, Zach. Yeah, thank you. And also, it's a good yeah, talk. Thanks, Ronnie. Thanks for being here. <laughs> thank you, Ronnie. <laughs> thank you, Ronnie. Yeah. For the um, hard work you put in every episode. Yeah, just a little Ronnie appreciation here. Uh, shine a <laughs> light on that. <laughs> great new member all right team. don't laugh at ronnie west he puts don't a laugh. lot of worry <laughs> oh no yeah not... <laughs> i appreciate you ronnie I appreciate you. all right all well right. till next time till next time thanks for listening to this listen to us roundabout movies podcast episode goodbye and i will see you again on the next show